in the physical realm, it's like this, you know? In the spiritual realm, it's this. Flee from here, Satan. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Flee from here. God bless you. Have a nice day. Today, this is inside the ministry. Uh, why did I call this inside the ministry? Well, it's Bible study on a whole new level. This type of Bible study, what I do is I we, we read the scriptures and then if there's something that you have a trouble understanding, we stop the whole Bible study and we look and we study that little paragraph. So say for an example, we're doing Matthew chapter 15 verse 3 and we're starting there and it talks about defilement comes from within so that's the name that uh i named this episode for today uh shanna has a bible study for us as well which is a, a luke somewhere luke 15 or something it's small one. Oh, small it's, it's fine <laughs> you know what i'm saying anyways i was planning on doing ministry today uh but i think i'm still gonna go do it it's just uh you know, whenever this is over. So I would like to open a Bible study with the prayer as we uh, bow our heads. Um, Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to study your word. Lord, in this moment in time, I ask you to uplift our minds and strengthen us to understand your word. Lord, fill us with your holy wisdom. Give us the power to understand your word right now, Heavenly Father. As your spirit fills this room, Lord, I call upon you to fill us with your wisdom and help us to understand your word for what it is and what it always has been. Lord, open our minds right now for your word to sharpen us, to encourage us, to bring us and give us the food spiritually, not naturally, but spiritually, the spiritual food that we need. We pray right now, Lord, that as we do this study, your spirit fills this room and that it will enable us to become stronger, wiser, faster, and more dependent upon your spirit and your way for your word says those who worship God must worship him in spirit and truth we pray in Jesus name the only name for only Jesus saves in Jesus name we pray amen all right um, Matthew chapter 15 verse 3 which says but he answered and said unto them why do you got a Bible it's the Bible. Oh, okay, all right. I got an extra one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. All right. Mine's is, uh, you know, are you fine? I, I want to make sure that you're completely comfortable. Yes. Perfect. Thank all right, babe, you're completely comfortable? Yeah, this is our you, house. When you're reading the word, you can see the word? <laughs> okay. All right. I, I just, I just want to make sure, because I, when I do Bible study, it's, it's like a whole nother, it's a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole nother level. So I just wanted to make sure, you know. All right. It's good that I've been blessed with 2020 vision my whole life. Not oh, me. Really? No, not me. Not me. The enemy said we're going to attack his eyes because we know yeah, where he's going to go. Exactly. <laughs> Where's your glasses? She wears contacts. In the bag. I oh, contacts. you wear contacts. It helps me with, well, when I'm driving with glasses sometimes with my peripheral vision. Sometimes. You see? Yeah. I it, it distracts contacts. me. Okay. It distracts me. Uh, you want to turn that light on, please? All right, there we go. Um, please excuse all that on the wall. Our children. I'm having fun time with the porn marker. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Oh, um, I want to show her something, guys. Time out for a minute. This is proof that I was alive back in the 1800s. As you can see, you know, see that's me. I'm technically like 189 years old. That's me. I had my gun. I was I was some type of sheriff back then. I lost my job. Now I'm a child of God. Uh, that's my son right now. Uh, the reason why he is the same age is this, he never he never he never ages. He just grows. His feet get bigger, but his age never changes. And that's my wife right now. We've been married over a hundred years. Uh, time travelers. <laughs> yeah, we're we're time travelers, everybody. I knew it. 
Matthew chapter 15, verse 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? Now, when the disciples were accused of sin, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zero in on this, this scripture right here, verse 3. When the disciples were accused of sin, Jesus answered with an accusation. Jesus was strong in his reply because these leaders were far too concerned with the ceremonial uh, 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 practices. You know, when they declared people unclean, it was because of their tradition. They denied the people access to God. And that's the same thing that we're going through today in some of the churches. Um, it was one church that I was going to, and I went there with a brother of mine, a brother in Christ, and I went there, and, and we went in, and, and we was going to go in and, and uh, have church with these people, fellowship with them, and they stopped us at the door. They wouldn't even let us in. They were like, oh, no, you're trouble, you're trouble. No, no. It, it, you see, what was going on was there was something happening in the spiritual realm. And these people knew exactly what we were. You know, we weren't like, you know, playing games here. But anyways, this was a strong reply from Jesus. Now, we know Jesus is the invisible image of God, correct? Mm -hmm. He's the invisible image of God. Um, and when Jesus says something, it's written in stone. So ultimately, these conflicts with religious leaders became the outward reason why Jesus was delivered to the Romans for death. Now, I want to stop there and say that, you know, every time someone declares something like many Roman emperors said that uh, Jesus, uh, no, excuse me, that they were God. You know, Kanye West made a Bible. Mm -hmm. No one said anything about that. Or that, uh, that lesbian Bible now, it's called the Queen. Queen James Bible. Version. Yeah, they got a lesbian Bible. Yeah. Queen James I've Version. I've heard of it, Melly. Go, go ahead and go, uh, show her real quick. On, on, I'll, I'll on. Write it down. Yeah, yeah, write it down. Check this out. Yeah, yeah it replaces everything of uh, homosexuality, by the way. Oh, you know, this is the devil's way of trying. See, look, when there's people out there in the world who do not, who are not, this, <sighs> hallelujah. God calls us to fill us with his word when someone else comes, comes right up when I put Queen James mm -hmm. yeah it comes right up when somebody comes mm -hmm. with another word it's got what? rainbow everything yeah it's got I said I saw it before it, who's their God then instead of it being God instead of being Jesus they put in an alternative name to fit their criteria yeah the other, that's that's, the that's how it is what is the other name is it, it a, it's a woman I think so actually no they, they, they try to find a female image of God they yeah. can't find it because it doesn't exist oh my God is not on gender. I know. You know what I'm saying? We can't say he, she. And this That's one, it. This but one, our understanding is limited. That's why we complain, we, 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 we pertain to God as he, or, or this, that, and other, or they, or they say he. Yeah. And God's like looking down at earth like, I'm not gender. Yeah. I'm not under that gender. God is outside of time. God is outside gender. Yeah. And you got to understand this. So, um, I was saying that when somebody, the reason why some of these people are, on a uh, uh, some of these people are accepting of this in this Queen James Bible and this and another and they look at word and, and everything like that is because they don't have the understanding they don't have they're not filling themselves up with God's word every single day that's why God calls us to read to study man live not by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God so this is where our food is at so I had one guy that was starving he was he, he was uh, um, he was hungry and um, he was looking for food, and uh, hold on, hold on, I, uh, I'm looking for something real quick. Hold on. <clears throat> hold on, hold on. No, it's just something on my lip was bothering me. Something on my lip. I rebuke that, that 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 wicked spirit in the name of Jesus. So, um, God calls us to fill us with his word. That way, when somebody else comes and tries to come against us, we say, oh, look, Matthew this, Matthew 12, and, and, and Romans 8, 33, and, 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 and John 1, 1, John 1, 3. This, you, we can start big spitting scriptures because when we're using the word of God, we're battling the spiritual realm. See, in the physical realm, it's like this. In the spirit, I'm mean, excuse me. In the, in the spirit, in, in this physical realm, it's like this, you know. 
in the spiritual realm, it's this. God wants us to understand the difference. Because Satan says, oh, it, it doesn't matter, you know. So that's the reason why when someone else comes along with a, a different uh, saying of something, no, we, 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 can, we can fight because we have spiritual weapons. And, and one thing that Satan wants people to not know is to not know how to use their spiritual weapons. God has given you a belt just like he's given you a garment. And just like Sandy Armstrong said in his other video, he says, but people have the ability to take off the garment. You know what I'm saying? And Satan knows this. Satan knows that we have the ability to take off things, to turn away from God, and this and another. So that's why he attacks the flesh. So the scripture goes on to say that because of your tradition, you see Jesus repeated what the scribes and the Pharisees had already mentioned, that this accusation was based on tradition. And that's what's stalling people today in some of these churches is tradition. Because tradition will tell you, look, this is how far you can go and no further. It will limit their faith, their practices, their beliefs. Um, the religious leaders demanded that these ceremonial washings be based on tradition, not scripture. Um, we're going to move forward here. Uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 4, and I'll stop at 6. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, whoever shall say to his, um, whoever shall say to his father or, mo or his mother, it is a gift. But whatsoever thou mighty have be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother he shall be free thus have ye made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition just like I said before limiting themselves Satan says follow tradition follow this now there is a tradition that God gives us to follow you know prayer fasting and this and another but it doesn't limit us So the clear command of God said that everyone should honor to their father and mother, even stating a penalty for extreme disobedience to this command. When we are adults and no longer in our parents' household or under their authority, we no longer have to obey our father and mother. Yet we are still commanded to honor them. That command endures. For the scripture says, whatsoever profit you make, you have received from me is a gift of God. So some Jewish people of Jesus' day had a way to get around the command to honor your mother uh, honor your father and your mother and this is what uh, most people are doing today they are trying to get around God Freemasons they don't disregard God Illuminati they don't disregard God they know what the actual shape of this earth is they know that there's no planets they know it's just stars there's a firmament they know all this it's their duty to hide it from us you can't hide God we found God we found Jesus Christ. We're saved. We're filled with his Holy Spirit. Now, their job beginning was to keep us blinded. We allow God to come into our life, fill us with his spirit. So now their job has changed. Now, instead of trying to blind us, now it's just to attack us. Silly old Christians don't know any better cult, you know, this, then, the other. So if they declared that all their possessions or savings were a gift to God that were especially dedicated to him, they could not they could then say that their resources were unavailable to help their parents. And at any given time, you guys have uh, ladies, women of God, I'm sorry, guys. Well. That's <laughs> really uh, women of God, at any time you have a question, uh, just let me know. Yeah, there you go. All right. So um, you were reading the passage about honoring your mother and father. Uh-huh. <clears throat> what if you f I feel deep down that I don't do that? And it's not on purpose. Like, I don't do it purposely to hurt them or be against them. Well, what, type, what, what do you mean by not well, honoring them? Re re religious 
you know, difference in religious beliefs, etc. and traditions. And I guess that kind of correlates with well, I think because of your tradition, like, I don't know. I think that when you say uh, you, you have tr trouble doing that, I think the fact is, is that I think that you, I think you still honor them. Actually, actually you do because you love them. Isn't love part of honor? Yeah. So it's, what do like, you think? Is that, is that all that is required of children to honor their parents by just loving them? By just loving them, yeah. That's a good question. Let's, let's research that real quick. Um, by looking up, uh, um, can you get the computer real quick and give me, a, uh, I need a definition of love. What is, what is love? Uh, real quick, so we can go into that real quick. No, just go into the internet. Isn't there, isn't there a verse? Isn't there a verse in the Bible that says love is? No, 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 no. Hold on. I I want to pull up the definition of love. I'm gonna go into the scripture on um, what the scripture says of what love is. Okay. Um, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. This is First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse four through eight. It is not arrogant. Are rude it does not insist on its own way it is not arable or resentful it does not rejoice at wrongdoing but rejoices with the truth love bears all things believes all things so when you look at the scripture do you fit that with your mother and father love is patient love is kind so I would say that you still honor them you haven't turned your back on them yeah, because I love them. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess the difference in their religious beliefs, that's where it mostly, in my opinion, comes from. And also their traditions of what a female slash woman's role is in my culture. And I don't fit that. Yeah. So honor, <laughs> honor your parents the way God calls you to honor them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because that mm -hmm. is based on what love is. Yeah. Um, if I didn't honor my parents, I would have no love for them. I wouldn't care for them. Even when they're wrong, you know what I'm saying, I would still love them. I showed honor to my biological mother by going to see her and making an extension to her to, to make sure that she believes in Christ. That's love. Yeah. For me to, you know, I put aside, I've forgiven her. For, that's, that's honor too, it's forgiveness. forgiveness. You know, so pitting aside how you feel about a person is still honoring them, respecting them. We honor the President of the United States. We honor mm -hmm. God's laws because before I can honor someone, I first have to have love right. for them. This is how I know ye are my disciples when you have love one to another. Right. So. I know. Um, what if somebody doesn't know their parents or they don't no longer talk to them because they're of the world and you're trying to be of Christ? Yeah, I also know a few brothers and sisters in Christ that have... What if... The question is that you're asking is, what if you don't talk to them? Or you never knew your parents. Do you have any hate in your heart towards your parents? No. You can still honor someone, I, even when they're not in your life no more. You can still honor them. Praying for them? Exactly. Praying for them, having no hatred in your heart for them, but love for them. Keeping that image of them that's in your heart Even clear. Even at a distance because you know that if it gets more personal, it'll interfere with your walk with the mm -hmm. Christ. But you're not doing it out of hatred. Yeah. You're just, you're, you know, you Obedience. Your walk. And the person you never knew is just somebody that's a stranger to you. Like, you won't... I mean, if I never knew my dad, how am I supposed to feel in and towards him? Uh-huh. So, I mean, I can't say I really... I yeah, hate him. Yeah. I love him because I don't know. Yeah, same for me. Yeah. Do you know? Um, here's another example. If I go around cursing my dad behind his back, that's not honor. If I go around spray painting over every image of what my father looks like, that's not honor. These are, these are different things. Honoring. We honor the law. Striving under the speed limit. So these are different... I, uh, what if you get like into an altercation with either of your parents and you're... Altercation? Like a physical altercation? No. Like a verbal? Verbal. That's yeah. dishonor. Now check this out. Why do I say that? 
because even like like I said in the scripture with uh, uh, um, First Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy or boast, love does not insist on its own way. And here's the key part right here: it does not re it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. So when you're when people when people come against you, how do you honor them? By still showing love to them. Even when they slap the cheek, you still say, I forgive you. Not cursing them back. When you curse them back, you don't honor them. Even though they're not honoring you, you still got to show love back towards them. Okay. But righteous anger is okay. Right. You know, it's okay to be angry, but the Bible tells us sin not. Don't sin. Don't let the devil in on your anger. Still show honor. Still show respect. That's something I have to work on. When does it become... It's, it also says in the Bible, let all that you do be done in love. Mm -hmm. That is definitely something I have to work on. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's... With my... You know. Parents. When does it become the line between you defending yourself and then you... Um, well, well, God's supposed to defend you. No, what I'm you saying know. is... Like, when we cross people of the world or we cross people that we've known for a long time and they're trying to talk bad to us about our religion or about Jesus Christ and... Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Those people don't know any better. But when is... Where is... So, it doesn't give them a license to continue to do what they're doing, you know. But you're supposed to be the person that knows better and you're supposed to be teaching them love. Because they don't know love. Mm -hmm. So, for us to understand God, we had to, what? Experienced His love mm -hmm. to know Him. His Word, everything. We did, when we didn't know God, we were going around the world and doing what we wanted to do. And we, no, no one cared, didn't care about anything. But when God came into our lives, we were shown something that changed our lives. Mm -hmm. Before we were cursing God, not directly, but like, you know, in a rebellious way. So, all right. So you guys want to continue? I mean, excuse me. Women of God, do you want to continue forward? Yeah. All right. This convenient declaration apparently left the property, apparently still at the disposal of the one who made the vow, but deprived his parents of any right to it. Now. Our Savior here also lets us know that the fifth commandment obligated children to re, uh, re, uh, what do you call that word? R E L I E V E. Re, relive, relieve, excuse me, relieve their parents of their necessity. And this is the sense of the term honor in other texts of the scripture. So the scripture says, thus you made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Do this trick. One could completely disobey the command to honor his mother or father and do it while being extra religious. I'll be moving forward now. Uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 7 through 9. Ye hypocrites, well did Elias... I believe that's how you pronounce the name. E, e, say, Elias prophesied of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Now, this was true. Of the religious leaders, Jesus confronted and quoted the passage from Isaiah chapter 29, verse uh, 13. You want to pull that up real quick? Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. You see, I got to stop at everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good that I had a yeah, because, you know, well, I was going through the scriptures with someone and uh, the guy was like, oh, man. You see, I want to get like that because I just went to Romans chapter 8 on him. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I was like, let me show you something. And I just went to the scriptures and he was like, man, I want to get like that where I can. See, he, he was talking to someone else. He's like, see, he, you see, they, they know how to get to the scriptures. I, want, I, don't, I don't know how to do that yet. Who said that? I was in West New, um, Union City. Oh, 
Lupucci. Right out by, I was on, uh, what was it, 7th Street? You said 2915? No, 2913. Okay. I was at Union City on the corner of JFK and 7th Street by the Dunkin' Donuts. I, I, I posted right there and a guy came up to me and you know what the devil was telling me the devil was saying to me oh he gonna hit you oh he gonna do something he gonna do something dangerous to you but watch your son satan was trying to distract me from helping this guy i helped him i stood there and i said look if this guy gonna hit me let him hit me wow. praise the lord you know what i'm saying but that was a liar. Guy never hit yeah. me. He never even had any intentions to hit me. Because <laughs> he looked dangerous. Yeah. You know, looks are deceiving, though. This man came for the word of God. Fear, maybe like, the enemy was trying to put that fear in you. Yeah, the enemy was trying to put the fear yeah. in me, you know. Same thing with uh, when I was in North Bergen. God comes up to me and be like, brother, you know, if you're going to come to this, with this to Hudson County, you need to know Spanish. Satan was like, oh, I know you don't know Spanish, so I'm going to discourage you. Go home. Go home. I was in Secaucus. They were telling me, go home. Go home. I'm like, I'm on my way home. What are you talking about go home? I'm on my way home. I'm waiting for the rapture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the Lord to come. He's going to come on the clouds, and then I'm going to go home. Yeah. Then you're going to wish that I was still here. <laughs> You're going to wish for that light to still be in the world. <laughs> All right, what is it? Isaiah chapter 29, verse, 11, uh, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as the people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart from far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by their receipt of men. Okay, so you see this? There's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. the, what was going on then is still happening now. Mm -hmm. Yet it may also be true of us. We can appear to draw near to God all the while having our heart far from Him. We can sit here and we can proclaim we're Christians, we're, we're children of God, we, we do things of God and, and, and this and that and the other, but we ain't going home praying. We go home, let me, let me turn on the TV, let me, let me, let me go and, and, and jump on Facebook and, and, and share scriptures, but you know, I ain't worshiping God, I ain't setting the atmosphere, and I ain't doing any session prayers, and, and you know, I'll, I'll tell someone, hey, let me pray for you, L let me pray for you, and I go home and I never pray for them. I'll forget about them. God sees all of this. So, for us, when we say that we are children of God, then dang, better be children of God, children that God want and told us to be. It is easy to want to be impressed by the image of being near to God without really doing it from our heart. I was telling my wife the other day, I tell her, I was like, do you really think I want to do, do I really want to do street ministry? I don't want to do street ministry. I don't even want to be doing this. My flesh does not want to do Bible study. My flesh does not want to do street ministry. But my soul is willing. I have power over my flesh. God. So I love doing Bible study from the Spirit. I love doing street ministry from the Spirit. Because the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So God is interested in the internal and the real we are far more interested in the merely external and image one must take care of their relationship with God and it is not merely an external or an image so a lot of us today like to say that we are you know we're we're we're, we're love we love God with all of our heart and everything but we don't we don't we don't praise his name we don't we don't do anything for him you know, we don't, we don't sit here and proclaim to be children of God in public. You know, we'll, we'll hide that. I was dealing with someone that said, I'm a closet Christian. You know, they're a closet Christian. <laughs> you know, I, I was like, well, I, I showed the scripture where it says that Jesus will deny you before the Father if you deny him before men. You know, so the teaching as doctrines and the commandments of men, the quotation from Isaiah accurately describes the real problem with these religious leaders that they were honoring. They were trying to honor God and follow God by tradition and they elevated man's tradition to an equal level with God's uh, revealed word. Jesus didn't say all traditions are bad. He didn't say all traditions are good. He compared traditions to the word of God and pit them at a much lower priority than what God has said. 
Uh, too many of us, when we see someone, we don't test the spirit. We say, I'm a Christian. And I say, oh, Christian, come here. Oh, God, I love you, Christian. Yeah. Uh, none of us say, all right, Christian, let me see some fruits of the spirit. Let me see some proper identification. Let me see some Holy Spirit activity in you. I'm going to watch you. You know, saying so, but many of us are not afraid of offending the person they do that. Yeah, I'm not afraid of offending anyone. Yeah, sometimes you know. I've been people who are like that that are afraid to say, I'm going to hurt your feelings by doing that, or I'm going to not say that, I'm just going to keep it secret and just. I'm not afraid to offend anyone, but I, my intention is not to offend them, but to tell them the word mm -hmm. in an attempt to reach them. Some people, I, I was in the Zello channel um, uh, a day ago or whatever, or, or a couple of weeks ago, I was in the Zello channel and a guy was saying to me, oh, I think you just go out there and do street ministry because you just want to go offend people. You, you just want to make them mad because I walked in there and I said, man, a lot of people could be mad today about this, this sermon that I'm going to read. He thought that my intentions were to do it on purpose. To, to it on purpose. purpose. Yeah. People could get mad at me regardless. I can't please people. But I know how to please God by faith. Um, I'm at verse 10 now, uh, 10 through 11. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth unto, into the mouth defiles a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defiles a man. So having dealt with the religious leaders, Jesus now instructed the common people about their authentic godliness. Jesus stated a fundamental principle, eating with unclean hands or any other such thing that we pit into us is not defiling. Rather, it com what comes out is what defiles and reveals if we are unclean, defiled hearts. So this is the reason why God calls us to pay attention and see what a person is saying listen to what a person saying watch what they're doing <laughs> Stop. <laughs> so this is how you guys know that i am of christ because as you're listening to me you're hearing the word of God. I'm speaking from the word of God. But anybody else that doesn't speak from the word of God, you got to be able to know, hear what they're saying. Because if, like I said before, if we have the word of God stored up in us, when someone else comes with a different doctrine, we'll know, oh, that's not of God. I rebuke that person. And you rebuke him. You know, show correction to that person. Um, especially when people are talking. Like I sit back and, 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 and some people will call it, call it, call it out quick. They'll call it out real quick. They'll say, um, oh, you cussing. You ain't a child of God. Well, how do I not know that that person's under the, the he's, he's being shaped and everything. You know what I'm saying? How do I not know that that person's still in a work, working with God, still being, you know, put together with, uh, with Christ, you know? But I can know inside, I can say, okay, this person is not all the way there. On some on some things so this is not to say that there are not the following things that we can take into ourselves one example of this might be pornography but in a specific context Jesus spoke about ceremonial clean cleanliness in regard to food and he anticipated that under the new covenant all food would be declared kosher and that and we find that in Acts uh, Acts I believe Acts chapter 10 verse 15 the principle set out by Jesus words in Matthew chapter 15 verse 11 which you know I, I went over and 17 to 20 made the ultimate abandonment of the Old Testament food laws by the church you got people out there they're thinking that they're Jews they think that they're, they're Gentiles but they think that they're, they're, they're Jews. So they're, they're trying to walk with... See, this is the problem. There's, there's a difference. When we open ourselves up to a lot of different things, we're opening ourselves up to, to 
writings that were written by men and then we adopt that and we say oh we got to honor this like some people say oh we got to honor the sabbath day and this and that and the other and, and i'm not even going to get into that subject i already know but i'm just saying an example we got to honor this and we got to we can't you know turn the lights on on sunday we can't turn the lights on on monday or, or whatever you know what I'm saying so and then they'll take their doctrine that they have newly created and within themselves thinking that it's true and say, oh, this is the way God wants us to, to walk. You know what I'm saying? But how do we know that, that Jesus kept the law and the law, uh, uh, I wouldn't say the law has been done away with. I would say the mortal law still stands. But when we see Jesus saying this, we know that, okay, I can wear fabrics now. They're mixed. You know, this is, this is what he was talking about. Um, now I'm at Matthew chapter 15, verse 12 through 14. Then came his disciples and said unto him, hold on for a second. I got to check something. Hallelujah. 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 All right. I, I, no, I got to, I got to check the audio and make sure it's working because there's a glitch. You know, the devil's a liar. He likes to interrupt stuff. Um, see, I got to be on my toes. I can't, I, I don't fully rely on electronics. You know, I'm checking this and making sure that it's moving because Satan has a way of interrupting these broadcasts, making sure that people don't listen. Facebook has a way, you know, some people, people don't have a way to contact me right now if the live stream goes down. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got to keep checking it to make sure, make sure everything's still working. I have been in cases where I did a tremendous, amazing sermon. People said, I didn't get to hear it. You know, so that's where that habit comes from. But anyway, scripture says in Matthew chapter 15, verse 12, Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knoweth thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my, my heavenly father hath not planted shall be up, up, uh, rooted up. Let me say that again. Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They are they they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both fall into a ditch. So this is a scene here. <laughs> the disciples came to Jesus saying something like this. He said, Jesus, did you know that you were offending these guys? Of course, Jesus knew that they were offended. He, he offended them. He intended to offend them to offend them. The, and the way they valued man's traditions was too highly. So this applied directly to the religious leaders when the scripture says every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted and all like them. Their commandments of men will not have, it, it will not last because they are not rooted either in God or in truth. That's why the scripture says we worship God in spirit and in truth, not in, in doctrines and in, in devils and traditions. You know, those ain't going to last. But God is eternal. And this is why I tell people, people, some people can't understand why hell is, a, is an eternal place. Well, just think about God. What, what is God? What is he to you? He's eternal, right? So that, that would mean to me that his joy is eternal and his anger is eternal. God forbid anybody fall in his anger. But what we have right now is a period of grace. Mm -hmm. But it's not to be taken lightly. It's not like a bank account where I can take some and then deposit some. And then, you know, if I mess up, I can take more. It's an eternal account, you know. Mm -hmm. Um... Okay, this principle should make us examine ourselves to see if we imitate the Pharisees in making traditions commandments. Like, for an example, I used to belong to a church where there was no, no fruits of the Spirit. Now, I was still growing in the Spirit at this church, but I didn't know that... You remember the church, right? It was all soft and lovely, and they, they, soft, they softened it too up. That was the first red, sign, the red flag. But um, some people think that by following traditions and, com and, and commandments of traditions that they're following God. God says, I never wrote that. That's not me. That, that's not even inspired by Scripture. 
What are you doing bowing down to statues? What are you doing kissing the feet of statues? What are you doing kissing the hand of the Pope? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? What is this? And they think they're following God. That's why when we speak the word of God to them, they get offended. Now, either the person is going to be diligently following commandments and traditions, and then they'll be convicted of the sin, and they'll know inside themselves, wait a minute, this is wrong. Let me change that. Because we're looking to reach people to be convicted of sin. That's the, that's the job of the Holy Spirit. It's for us to speak the word and then the Holy Spirit convicts them. And then that conviction turns around, Lord, I want to repent. It'll draw them to repent. When I do something wrong, I repent. You know, because I have this thing inside of me <laughs> called the conviction that I know it's wrong and I want to make right with God. I don't quench the Holy Spirit by saying, oh, Holy Spirit. <laughs> no, I want, I, I want to do right. And when I know I've done wrong, I need to make right with God right away. Um, Jesus did not organize a focused anti-scribe and Pharisee committee. He knew that their efforts would fall under the weight of their own legalism. Now, we sense when the scripture says they are blind leaders of the blind, both fall into a ditch. We sense that Jesus said this with sadness and perhaps with more sadness for those who are led by the blind than the blind leaders of the blind. Let me, check, let me, let me tell you guys something real quick. Um, I was walking to Journal Square one day. It was the other day. What was I doing? What was I doing? I was walking to Journal Square. I was going to meet you. And I saw, I saw someone. I saw that guy. Remember that guy in the video? Do you remember him? You got him more so as back, right? Do you remember the that Muslim? <laughs> do you remember the Muslim guy that with the glasses? He was trying to like say that we worship the same God and everything. Oh, okay. Okay. I saw him. He's wearing his garment, got his little dress on, Muslim stuff. And I was like, I had the Bible in my hand. I was like, truth is here. Truth is here. Truth is here. And I felt so sad for him because he, he, he's, he's, like he's pacing around in circles like this. Like he's waiting for someone. And I was like, oh my goodness, man. He's, he's got his old garments and everything on. He's you know, got his little Quran and everything. And it's like, this man is so dedicated to this and it's going to lead him straight to the lake of fire. And I, that's why I came up to him and had the Bible and I said, truth, truth, truth. See, sometimes I do this to people. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I won't even stop and talk to them. I'll just say a little something. Like I'll point to the Bible and say something. Mm -hmm. Dropping hints here and there. Dropping seeds every time I see them. Because they're given a chance. Um, I pity the poor people. For with this, the blind lead the blind, both fall into a ditch. And in, 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 in ignorant an unfaithful ministry is the greatest plague God can send amongst a people. Wow. This is the reason why we always got to be following God's word. In the words of Jesus, we see the guilt of those who are blind leaders, blind leaders of the blind. We also see the responsibility of followers to make sure their leaders are not blind. This is the reason why when we join, when you join a church and stuff, you got to find the leader. Look at the leader, because everyone's looking up to the leader. Everyone's looking up to the pastor. Let me see what this pastor, what, what, what words of God is this pastor speaking? No, that's why it's important. Um, let me see. Oh, it's 39. 39. Okay, I'm going to stop at 20 today, because I got to do street ministry. You, come, you coming out street ministry? Hello. Are you you, you, you want to, yeah, we already know. I have the kids. <sighs> I mean, well, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to come, you want. Yeah, yeah. I need to tell me that. All right. Well, are you coming? Uh, or you got something to do? Um, I'm going to be Journal Square. How long are you going to be for? I don't know. I, I, everybody always tells me, how long am I going to do street ministry for? I say, I say, the spirit. It, the Spirit is willing, you know what I'm saying? So when the Holy Spirit moves, we never put a time limit on the that's Holy true, Spirit. That's true, yeah. I'm only putting a time limit on this because I'm trying to get out there to the people on the streets. Right, is, right. is there a lot of people out there right now? I was... Oh, you didn't pass I didn't through pass, there? I didn't pass, no. I came up uh, Montgomery. There's a lot of people outside right now, right? I mean, I mean it's warm outside, so there's going to be people yeah, out. Probably. All right. All right, I'm going to stop at verse 20. This is going to be the last one. 15 through 20. 
Then answered Peter and said unto them, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye not understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the, uh, what's that word? Drock? Uh, drock? Drock? Let's just say the, the butt, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but those things which proceedeth out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile, defile a man. Like when a person's throwing up, and they're, they're possessed with an unclean spirit. Can they spiritually throw up? They can't spiritually throw up. Well, when, when you see people throwing up, spit and everything, that's an outward sign. That, that's a physical sign mm -hmm. that this, the unclean spirit is coming out of them. Yeah. That's. You remember that um, David Lynn video we were watching? He was rebuking a spirit, and this lady kept, she kept coughing and coughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When the people, that's remember, the, remember that, remember that woman that was around us, and she was coughing. Oh yeah. <laughs> you remember her? Yeah. She was coughing a lot. Her, her husband or whatever yeah. was trying to. No, no, not her. They, she was by herself. Remember, she was calling the police that on lady. me all the time. That white lady. Right? That white lady. Yeah. Oh, remember, I had to. Getting too close to you. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You she was coughing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember. yeah, she was heavily possessed. Oh yeah, no, I she's know. coughing like that. That's another I sign. Her eyes, the way she was looking at you, pissed some water. Yeah, I, I knew it. I saw it. Mm -hmm. That was crazy. You gotta be careful with people like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some of these spirits, they run in ranks. So, for out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. So Matthew chapter 15, verse 12 through 14, Jesus really didn't speak on a parable except for the brief illustration of the blind leading the blind. Yet because the disciples did not understand him, what? What is it? No. Oh. They understand him, they ask for an explanation. Are you also without understanding? So Jesus amplified the point first made in Matthew chapter 15, verse 11. And I'm going to go back to that real quick. Which says, Not that which goeth into the mouth defiles man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defiles a man. So we are defiled from the inside out rather than rather from the outside in. And this is a particularly true of ceremonial things like foods. Now, Jesus uh, boldly said that these evil things come from the innermost nature. They are accidents or more mistakes. Uh, they reveal how corrupt we are in a fallen nature. Man, this is truth right now. This is absolutely deep because I remember I was with a pastor and he was looking for something in his car and he was like, oh man, what the S? He said the S word, he cussed. So when he cussed, that I looked at him like, you know, like, oh. what spirit, you know, what spirit you, you got in you? Mm -hmm. You know, ain't no child of God gonna be cussing and whatnot. I mean, there's a difference when you, you're, you're trying to have your walk with God and you're struggling with your flesh and everything, but this is why we got to always constantly be listening, hearing. You know, when someone comes and they're a Christian and they say, yeah, I'm a, I'm a child of God. All right, we got to test the spirit. I got to know that the spirit that you have is of God because e either you're going to come and congregate and grow in Christ and you are part of the body of Christ or you're going to come to create the vision. You know, so I got to watch you. For the heart is the source of, of man's true character. And, and this is why I try to tell people all the time. You know, most men are more concerned about what a, lo a woman looks like. You know, and I used to tell uh, uh, men all the time. I used to say, you know what? Um, you got to wake up next to this person every morning. You know what I'm saying? Would you rather have a woman with, with a, a perfect looking body? And, and a corrupt soul and, and angry and anger at you, it's not even worth it. You know, that's why we got to look at the, the heart, the true character of a person. You know, listening to the person, how they acting, what they speaking. You know, these are all the fruits of, of a spirit, the character. And therefore, of his purity or impurity, it is not merely the seat of emotion, but the true person as he really is, not just as... He appears outwardly, out outwardly to be. 
Murderers begin not with the dagger, but with the malice of the soul. That's why uh, uh, in this country, they, they, you, you, you're, 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 if, if you murder someone, you, you're guilty. But God says, no. If you look upon someone with lust, you're already guilty. Remember, God looks at the origin of a thing. An origin. He looks at the origin. It's not the act. It's the origin. Where did it come from? As soon as it came from there. You know what I'm saying? So that's why people say, well, I didn't sleep with the woman. Yeah, but you did in your mind already. This is, this is you know, the battlefield is in the mind. Adulteries and fornications are first gloated over in the heart before they are enacted, enacted by the body. The heart is the cage from hence, from whence these unclean birds fly forth. Said plainly, many people who worry about external habits, what they eat and drink and other such things, should care more about what words come out their mouth. This is the reason why the devil got people more in traditions and, and everything rather than, uh, uh, well, well, what's their heart say? Satan don't want you looking at your heart. He don't want you <coughs> taking your heart and saying, does it match up with God? Because your, 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 your desire is to follow God. And Satan would say, all right, you can follow God by tradition. Hey, look, you, you're, not, you're going to church and you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not messing up. You're good to go. And God says, you're not even following my word. <laughs> Start there, you know. <laughs> they do more against God and his people by what they say than by what they eat or drink. So God can say, yeah, you went to church every day. You, you, you did what was right. You, 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 you know what I'm saying? But, uh... Did you love me? Lord, I loved you. I did all I wanted for you. You hear those words? All I wanted. They never did what God wanted. See? So, um, unfortunately, the emphasis of the religious leaders in Jesus' day and often in their own is often only on their external things, not the internal things that make for true righteousness. And that is Bible study, Matthew chapter 15, 3 through 20. I have a general question. Yeah. In your experience, because you experience a lot of people with yeah. the public and preaching. Experience with people too, but not in the same way. Um, I have experience in selling, you know. When do you find the time where you're preaching to somebody that... Uh, you feel like they need an extra push or you just stop and not hurt You know what I do? It's not going anywhere. You know what I do? I find like little little subjects like when you're selling something be like, you know, um, I would just come out of nowhere with someone. Like when I'm doing street ministry and, and I want to interact with someone, I'll use something as an example. I say, oh, look at these rocks. Look at these rocks here. Wow, this is, this is something else, you know. Did you, did you know that God, you know, this came from the ground, and, and then that's the connection. That's the connection that I make with the person. I don't just come out and say, do you believe in God? Because then in their mind, that gives them time to, oh, I got to prepare an answer. You know, I would catch them off guard by using an object or something or a subject to bring God in. That way, it's seen as uh, innocent, as, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, judge them or anything like that. But to answer your question... How, how to know when to stop with the person, right? How far to go to try to minister to them and to you? How far to go to how to, how far to go to how, your question is, how far do I go in ministering to them? Before you feel like you're going to hit a wall, like you're hitting the wall over and over again with them. All right, well, I'm going to give you a scripture real quick. Because I would give you my opinion, but I don't like doing that. Here, Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your apparels before pigs, lest they trample them under the foot and turn to attack you. So, study that scripture. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6 will tell you that eventually the person is going to turn against you, attack you. Uh, sometimes it's like 
the wheels are turning and they're going nowhere. You'll see if there's any fruit coming back to you or if there's anything that any signs of the person that's listening to you, then they'll be listening to you. But once they're not listening to you, they're not paying attention to you, then you draw back. You know, and you move on to the next person, you move the ministry to the next person because you already planted the seed. Your job and my job is to plant the seed. God waters it, sun come down on it, you know, so.